What is up, everybody? And we're here live from the Genesis 3 floor. It's definitely very exciting to be here. Um, and who do we have here? Hi, I am Matt Dodzeb. I am from Boston, and I play Melee. So this is a very exciting tournament. We have so many setups looking uh, that we're able to look out for uh, right now. I think there is probably between both uh, Smash 4 and Melee, it looks like there's upwards of 100, definitely. I think maybe upwards of 130 setups here. It's fantastic. It's actually pretty crazy because we're just like glancing around. And were you at Genesis 1 and Genesis 2? Genesis 2, not Genesis 1, unfortunately. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you remember what the venue looked like. Yes. Super crowded. Yeah. Smelly. That's for sure. Definitely very <laughs> smelly. It was, um, what was it? Gen I, I don't know what the Genesis 1 venue was. Was it the same as Genesis 2? Um, they were both the same. Okay. Yeah. So that was what? It was a, uh, it wasn't It wasn't a convention center. It was, it was like, like on like a fairgrounds? It was a it was not even the fairgrounds. It was mm -hmm. like a shack. Yeah, yeah. It was just like a little building with like a little bubble roof. Yeah. And uh, I think my favorite part about that tournament, Genesis 2, was um, the weather was perfect. So while they were setting things up on day three, and Genesis always does day three really well, um, they kicked everybody out of the venue, and everybody's on the grass outside. It's yeah. beautiful weather, nice breezy, like 80 degrees, no clouds in the sky. And everybody is on the grass, and we set up like a massive game of uh, Shark and Minnow, I think it was. Yeah, they mentioned yeah. that in the documentary. Oh, did they? Yeah. Yeah, that was, I think, one of my favorite experiences from any Smash tournament ever, period. You know, because you don't really get things like that going on too much. And, um, but, you know, then, of course, we go back into the venue, and they have the stadium seating set up and everything like that, where we were able to sit in the bleachers to watch finals, which was fantastic. It's very worth it. So why did I choose you over Cactar? Who is um, actually um, kind of sick right now? So oh, that's why Cactuar is kind of sick. <laughs> I know it. Right. Um, <laughs> so um, he's going to be coming in later. Mm -hmm. So we have Matt Dodd Zeb. But why do you think I picked you to be here? Um, I'm thinking probably something to do with the melee games. It's because I had no one else. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm out of anyway. here. <laughs> but uh, anyway. It's kind of crazy because I look at this venue, mm -hmm. you know, it's been a while since I've been to Genesis. I actually did not go to Genesis 2. Mm -hmm. It was really small. I think we had 30 setups for 500 people. Something like that, yeah. And it was not enough. Not enough. I think we had like seven man rotations, so I, I gave up on playing friendlies. Yeah. And I look here, um, there's stations, there's a friendlies room, mm -hmm. and we've evolved a lot since those days, although oh, I yeah. do miss them for certain aspects. Yep. It's kind of crazy how much Genesis has grown. I never thought we were going to be in the San Jose Convention Center. Oh, Hopefully yeah. we can get a pan shot later today of just like how big this is. Um, we made some friends with FurCon people. Yes. <laughs> the women's volleyball tournament is also going to be here. Right. But I want to give some context over numbers before mm -hmm. we move it on. Sure. So Genesis 1, if we were to compare singles entrance, had 290 players. And Genesis 2 in 2011, actually, we lost some people. We so only had less. 228 people. Mm -hmm. So we went from 290 to 228 in a span okay. of two years. Who would have thought that four years later, we would have almost nine times the amount of people with 1,828 people? Just total. goes to show for how much the community has expanded. It's fantastic. Since 2013, we've blown up. Yeah, it's so crazy. So we went from 228 to 1,828 in just singles. So an increase of 1,600 people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, and we didn't even have much of a stream for Genesis 2. We had to yeah. stream it off of somebody's phone. Right. Because initially um, the Genesis staff, right? yes, mm -hmm. the Genesis staff believed that you had to go and experience it for yourself. And they were kind of against streaming. Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not. My, my, how, how the times yeah, changed. No, now, now you have as you say, you have these different stakeholders in the community. Yeah. Uh, streamers definitely being a big part of that. Um, but I do think that their their idea or, or you know their approach to say, well, it's really something you have to come and experience, um, is one of the the biggest things that have drawn so many people here today yeah. this weekend. You know, where Genesis one and Genesis two were just so storied and just so raw. Yeah. You know, in, in the way that they're done. Like you can go back and watch VODs from Genesis two and you'll see parts of the video get cut out and then it's like somebody from the, you know, crowd with their camera shot yeah. of the mat, of the projector edited in, you know. Um and I think then, you know, having the four years off that they did, it really built a lot of excitement for this yeah. tournament. And it just shows like how the Smash community has changed because, you know, back then 
you know, if you, in 2011, if you were in the Smash community, that meant you were really hardcore. Hmm. You probably like play, dedicated 10 to 15 hours, and now we have people that are like, you know, I'm not really gonna get into the game, but I like watching it. Yeah. And so we cater these streams to you guys. This year, we actually have a total of five streams, up from a dingy one four <laughs> years ago. And what are those? Uh, what are those streams? It's Showdown Smash. So we have Showdown mm -hmm. Smash. We have Showdown GG. Yeah. Um, so on Showdown Smash right now, the mainstream, they're actually playing the Melee games right now. So mm -hmm. if you want to tune in, do a little bit of multi-twitch, uh, go on right ahead. I don't remember the other streams. They're not quite mm -hmm. set up from what I can see. Uh, right. But yeah. we do Besides have three streams. more um, streaming stations. So mm -hmm. um, for you multi-twitch um, multi -twitch viewers, uh, go ahead and... I'm not sure if they're allowed to post the link. Uh, hopefully you don't in get chat. kicked. Yeah, you might get bodied. Maybe put it on twi Twitter. Maybe put it yeah. on Reddit. Um, but there's going to be a lot of melee action um, mm -hmm. for this weekend. And so Genesis 1, you know, the results were very interesting. We didn't have all six of the big six members. Um, right. And we're going to say big six. Well, it really uh, wasn't, yeah. you know, back Genesis 1, there really wasn't a big six, really, right? Yeah. You know, we had Mewtwo King, we had Mango, and then outside of that, like, our, bot, our Hungry Box had just kind of started to come up around that time, right? Yeah. And that was about it, wasn't and it? So our top five actually looked really different mm -hmm. in 09, um, roughly 09. Yeah. Um, so the Shizwiz was um, believed to be our number three player. Right. He was always considered as like one of the best, best Falco mains, where nowadays it's more like, well, you know, I think this guy could probably take him out, you know. Yeah. Right. Still a really strong player. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had J-Man, who was also yes. a really strong player. Yes. Yeah, um, there was actually like a document going around about who, how people were seated. So mm -hmm. um, Scar used to be ranked very highly. He was doing really well in his in the way that he was seeded with tournaments at the time. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, Lamb Chops mm -hmm. from was Florida. Uh, now known as Beer Man. <laughs> yeah. He's in your region, right? Uh, not my. He's in He's in New York City. So he's with uh, Hector Hertz and those guys at Nebulous. Uh, and he, he he's a master of the Drunken Bird. Nice. That's, that's what he is. He's Drunken Fist Master. And back then, I'm always going to laugh at Hugo for this, uh, Hugs, the Samus main. Mm -hmm. He said that Armado was not going to get higher than 17th at Genesis 1. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. A lot of people did not believe in him. because the. Uh, and I remember hearing one of those things where uh, Armada coming over, you know, people were like, well, he's only good because he's got, like, a double disjointed thumb or something. <laughs> <laughs> and so he can, like, you know, do uh, uh, float cancel Nair, like, really quickly because of that, or, you yeah. know, something like that. And it's like, well, that's, that's only why he's good. He's just got weird, weird fingers. And then Court actually made fun of his style. Court, mm -hmm. being an old-school peach man, used to play with PC Chris, mm -hmm. said that Armada did too many up airs, and that didn't make sense. It, it shouldn't combo, and against good players, this would never work. And he was very wrong about that. Yeah. Armada's run that year in winners Lunin, Lunin, Lucky, Shiz, Muti King, Mango. Yeah. Into Grand Finals, almost made it. Legendary set. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys haven't read the full narrative, um, it's on Red Bull Esports. Uh, um, what is Fear, a.k.a. Brian Funes, um, wrote an amazing series, so go ahead and check that out if you want to see more details about it. Mm -hmm. Interesting enough, um, he was one of the first American players to actually take a game off of Armada. Wait, who was? Um, the guy that wrote those Red Bull articles. Really? Uh, what is Fear? Yeah. Ganon main. They actually had a really janky pool where it was okay. three Ganondorfs and three Peaches. And <laughs> apparently they're playing on a laggy setup. Okay. Um, and Armada lost game one and demanded an immediate setup change. Yeah. But, so he, but he, lost, he lost that game. But you know, secretly, okay. maybe he's just not that good against Ganondorf. Maybe he's not. Didn't Eichelman take a game off of him? He did. Do we have Kage here? Kage's not at this tournament, is he? No, I don't think so. Uh, Kog no, I think Bizarro can't do I it. I think Kage. Well, actually, Bizarro took a game off. Of Bizarro Armada. took a game yeah, off. Yeah, that was at a. So foundry? maybe Armada has a Ganon weakness. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I mean, Ganon's just a big, big yeah. hunk of a character. He just throws out hitboxes, so that's fun. So the results, you know, for Genesis One, mm -hmm. there was about a 5k prize pot, so it wasn't super bad in the old times. Mm -hmm. uh, Mango number one won about 2.3k, mm -hmm. and then Armada at number two. Hungry Box, this was his right, like he quietly got number thir mm -hmm. three in that tournament. Right. Um, wasn't, you know, established as a god yet. Yep. Um, upset, upset players like the Shizwiz beat Zoo and arguably won the best sets of all time. That was the tournament also, uh, speaking of Zoo, that's that's the tournament in Genesis 1. He beat Muti King. Yes. So Zoo actually got fourth. Mm -hmm. um, Zoo versus Muti King, another classic set. Mm -hmm. So if you have some time, although you probably won't this weekend, um, Zoo versus Muti King Genesis 1 was an historical set. Zoo played out of his mind, in general played out of his mind this entire mm -hmm. tournament, felt narrowly short to Hungrybox that tournament. 
Fifth, we had Muti King. Sixth, although controversial. Disputed. Slightly disputed. Um, but I'm looking here. Muti King won $228. Uh -huh. Scar won $171. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference in money. Yeah. Out. It's definitely a different in place thing. Scar doesn't want to admit it, but the way that the tournament was run is that the organizers wanted to have it broken down with not first, second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth, seventh, seventh. They wanted to do fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Yes. And so that is what they set out to do. They had those tiebreaker matches. Mewtwo King played Scar, and to maybe one person's surprise, Scar lost. <laughs> and um, you know, but now it's very, very heavily disputed that uh, from Scar. He's like, no, I got fifth. Yeah. Fifth of Genesis one. Well, you know, Genesis wasn't the only tournament. If you look at the old MLG results, mm -hmm. they are um the MLG circuit where like Korean DJ, you know, as and all of them used to play. Yep. They always played out for six and eight. So Genesis wasn't, you know, being uh, unorthodox, on really. edge by doing that. Mm -hmm. But then Genesis one had three Falcon mains in the top eight with Scar, in order. Scar Dark Rain, and Hax. Back when Hax actually played the Pink Falcon. <laughs> Poor hacks. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we've ever seen, you know, an, a tournament of that caliber, you know, have three Falcons. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully it happens. You know, we've been waiting a really long time. DJ Nintendo jokingly says he put a curse on Falcon Mains and never get higher than fifth. And so far we haven't ever seen it. Yeah, it's it's something that everybody has said that Falcon has the potential to win the national, but it's never happened. Yes. We've never seen it. Um, do you know what the closest we've seen is? So not probably. Ha um, I would say you know hacks mm -hmm. getting s hacks would probably be the closest. He's done it. You know, I don't know the results off the top of my head, but yeah. I would like to say it's hacks. Yeah, um, probably. I mean, I I don't imagine it would have been certainly not Siren Specter, not Wizrobe or or Graveyard Gatsu for sure. Or SCJ. Or SCJ. Well, well, well SCJ had some. He got, if you count Super Nebs two as a national, uh, SCJ got second at that. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Close. I call that as like a super regional. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. You know, we flew out a couple tournament, a few high level players from other regions, but mainly it was, you know, Northeast, and Mid Atlantic. So it's kind of interesting. PPMD wasn't a known name yet. Yep. Hungry Box was still rising. Mm -hmm. um, Mango, Armada, Mewtwo King already established as the three best players of that year. Yep. Um, and Leffen, um, I don't he, know he how old Leffen was. Leffen was young. Leffen was. Probably how old in is middle he right school. now? Um, Leffen, is he he's well, 21? At 20? Evo, we all made fun of him because he couldn't go out drinking with so us. So he's under 21. Um, so he was probably like 15, 14. Yeah, 14 very, probably. Very young. I remember seeing the picture of him in uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis 2. 2. Look it up. He's so young. Like He's got the baby face and everything going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, that was Genesis 2, 2011. Um, so Genesis 2, you know, this was another great tournament. In terms of like the top eight, you know, we look at the results at the end. Very phenomenal tournament. And I think that the top, you know, the end grand finals are actually what saved Genesis. Like, totally. honestly speaking, uh, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 were the best, you know, tournaments logistically. No. But it had the best sets. Genesis 2, Armada versus Mango again. Mm -hmm. If you have never watched that video, um, do it. Um, don't watch this desk anymore. Just yeah. turn us off and watch it. Do your Armada vs. Mango was one of the best sets. This is the first time we ever saw Fox played at that high of a level. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember. And you can hear it. If you watch the match, you can hear it in the crowd where people are literally just screaming. It's not even like cheers. They're just screaming. It's yeah. just coming from the heart. They, ha they don't know what they're seeing. They, they don't know what's going on when they see Mango do a double jump wave land off the stage and then double jump back and then wave land back off the stage and then laser somebody. You know, they're... It, it, people went crazy. Um, definitely yeah. the highest. And it almost at that felt time. like anime esque at that point because it's like when like the the I don't know the average human in an anime like watches these people fight and you're just like in awe like you're like yeah. I don't think I could ever do this. That's like the impression that Mango and Aromato mm -hmm. both gave us out of that set. Todd got third, had a legendary run. Yes. Um, slayed all the Played Falcons. Very, very well at that tournament until he hit Mango. <laughs> um, but he beat Mango in winners that tournament. He did. He yeah. beat Mango's Falco um, in winners on that tournament. I remember there was a very interesting combo that he... Uh, actually, I think he ate the combo from Mango on Pokemon. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, but that was one of the best performances we've ever seen from Todd. Known for choking. Um, you know, I pulled it all together. I think that was like probably one of his last hurrahs before he retired. Yeah, no, we haven't seen a similar performance from Taj since, um, and not really prior either. Um, you know, he he'd been mostly a Mewtwo main um, well, for many years prior, and then he picked up Marth a little bit. He played bit, a lot right? of Marth too. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay. Always had a, had Marth. Mm -hmm. um, played some side Fox. You know, him and Ford used to have a lot of interesting sets. Okay. Uh, but you know, by this time we had the big five: mm -hmm. um, Hungrybox, Mewtwo King, PPMD, all hit top eight. 
Um, so Hungrybox got fourth, Mewtwo got fifth. Yeah. PPMD was a little sick, so he got seventh. Yeah. Um, Shroomed and S2J got sixth and eighth, respectively. So we did have another Falcon main yeah. in the top eight. And so I'm secretly hoping, you know, that we do, you know, get another Falcon. Um, I'm really rooting for SCJ or Wizzy to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it should be a Genesis tradition that a Falcon gets top eight. I would like that, but personally, what I want, I want a Mango Armada Grand Finals. That's what I want from this tournament. I don't care what happens prior. I want Mango Armada Grand Finals. That's what I want to see out of this. You know what? Three. I want that too. Yeah. Uh, no offense to everybody else. That's a really that's really strong, but. The Mango Armada, like when they're playing both at 100%, yeah. is just phenomenal to watch. It um, is. One of the most exciting, vibrant sets of the classic question of does an unstoppable weapon beat an impenetrable yeah. wall? And now, and they're they're one in one between Genesis tournaments. The, the, they have to Genesis. have the tiebreaker. You can't just you can't just not let them have the tiebreaker set. Right. You know. So. We have 1,828 people here. Mm. 74 of the top 100 SSBM rank um, are here. Wow. Um, Rip to Leffen. Um, we would have had a nice 75. We would have had a three quarters. We would have had all the big, you know, the mm -hmm. top 10 players what's here. What's the largest number? What's the largest turnout of SSBM ranked players at a national? Um, I'm not sure. It's really hard to keep track. What was I Big House? I think it was in the 60s. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Somebody's gonna, you know, correct me, and I'm glad if you do. Yeah. Um, I think Evo had sem like hit around the 70 ballpark. Okay. Yeah. So this might be the biggest. Yes. The, the, the mo the biggest turnout from the SSBM rank player. Yes. Nice. And we have several hidden bosses, you know, yeah. that, you know, weren't eligible for rank, but they're really strong and would have made it <laughs> if they um, got in. But I want to explain the format for this event if you're a little curious. So 64 players have been seated out into round two pools. Um, but they don't make it to top 64 immediately. They still have to win two sets to reach that point. Um, and then they'll be joined by one w person in winners and two mm -hmm. people in losers from round one pool. So mm -hmm. if you're playing your round one pool, um, you you have a great chance of making it out because it's top three. And in addition, those top 64 players aren't mm -hmm. in. So for people complaining a little that they don't get to play a top player, if you're good enough, you will play them anyway. Yep. And it actually gives you an easier day one. Right, and I, I do like that. Um, you know, it, it removes the, the fact that you might end up playing, you know, Mango in your round one pool semifinal match. Yeah, you know? and I think that kind of sucks. Like, especially, you know, if you're like a rising player, now your upper limit in terms of the player that you can play against is like the 65th best player, mm -hmm. rather than running into Mango early and then having to scrape it into right. losers and play like 15 rounds. Right, and so what we'll be doing with the 64 advanced players, uh, one person from winners, that's 120 in, in the winner side of bracket in round two, uh, and the two from losers, that'll be 128 in the loser side. So yes. it'll be 256 person bracket. Yes. Um, and so round one pulls will be played all day today. Mm -hmm. um, and then tomorrow we'll continue the action with round two pulls, trimming the 256 players into 64. Mm -hmm. And then later tomorrow evening, we will have the top 64 trim into top eight. Yeah. And then on Sunday, we will have the top eight at actually a different venue. Yes. Um, it's across the street, right? It'll be across the street. Mm -hmm. It'll be a concert-style venue. So literally, they'll be on stage, and we will have a giant auditorium mm -hmm. for people to just watch Smash. Yeah, and that's, again, uh, Genesis does day three big. Yes. They do. They do a fantastic job. It's something, uh, we've, we've never had a, a, a tournament that has done something like that, um, where, where you're taking the whole venue or the whole, the whole you know, bulk of the attendees and saying, all right, well, we're closing this one down on Saturday. Yeah. Night, so we'll see you here on Sunday. So I'm actually really excited. I might bring some friends from San Jose over mm -hmm. just for them to get the first glimmers of Melee. Mm -hmm. Um, Are there any casual stations on Sunday? I don't know. Just just watch. Probably just watch. Watch and socialize and enjoy. Yeah. Okay. And I actually like that. And that's one thing that Genesis has always done. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever watch Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 from like the camera videos, mm -hmm. um, they make it a tradition to turn off as many side setups as possible yes, so do. that no one's distracted. They're all focused and they're not doing other things. Uh, granted, that's more of a thing now. Um, where we just have a dedicated top eight. But before, people would play friendly. It would kind of yeah. kill the vibe. You turn around, you'd be like, you pause your mask when you hear the crowd yelling. Yeah. You turn around, like, oh, okay, that's cool. You know, and then and you so go back to it. If you're ever wondering why it was so energetic, part of it was because they dimmed the lights and they turned off everything or as much as they could. I don't know what it is about dimmed lights, but it, it's just not the same. You have all the lights on and you're trying to watch top eight. It's like you'll get the crowd eventually asking you to turn them off. Yeah. It's it's amazing because it's all the focus is on there. Mm. Um so for today, um, just to recap the schedule, the Melee Games is going on right now from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Showdown Smash. Yep. 
It's, and it's sort of in chunks, actually, where um, from 10 to 12, it's uh, University of Washington versus UCI, and then University of Arizona plays winner. Uh, even if they finish at 11.30, uh, we're still going to wait until 12 to start the next wave, because the way that they've done it is they've taken the 15 players from you know each section uh, and avoided putting them in their pools. So at 12 o'clock, then we're going to start the next round, which is Stony Brook University versus Georgia Tech, and then the winner plays York University from uh, Ontario, Canada. Nice. Yeah. And then later, uh, we from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m., we had the draft. We had the draft cruise event, mm. and if you guys saw, um, Scar and Toth did the draft show on Monday, and so we we will be doing that the whole night. We will have an exciting crew of commentators, and just you know, Big House Five. They did it right with yeah. the day one exhibitions. Yeah. And I think it was that the most exciting day one of a tournament that I've ever been to. Yeah, and there were like 40k viewers, which is a record. Yeah, huge. And so we get the opportunity to potentially see um, these strong players come together, whereas mm -hmm. this would normally be a late day two or a day three thing. Yep. And so I'm really excited. Um, if you want to tweet out um, using the hashtag G3, which team is going to win? So just if you think Team S Scar is going to win, just mm -hmm. do hashtag Team Scar. And let's really see what the people think. And who do, who do we have? Uh, we have, people? let's see. That is a good question. I think yeah. we're going to go over it later. Before okay. Um, but there are eight captains that mm -hmm. were voted in. Um, Scar, Hungrybox, PPU, SFAT, S -Fat, Axe, Ken, Ken, uh, Hugs, Hugs, West Falls. West Falls. Yeah. Well, wow, you're good. I've watched streams before. Damn. I've seen them. I've seen them. Maybe I should recruit you for Taffa stats. Those oh. stats on Zeb. Stats on Zeb. And then <laughs> melee singles pools mm -hmm. all day on Showdown Smash. I believe it will be on the secondary stream. Yep. Showdown uh, Smash 2. Um, team's not really getting the love today. Um, it'll be mostly off stream, but they will be playing today all day mm. simultaneously. And I don't know how far we're going to trim. I think we have two to three hundred teams. I'm not quite sure. I actually don't know. I don't know the count. And we're going to trim, I believe, to 64, I believe. Yeah. And yeah I, think so so I think it's all 64 for doubles. And so we'll be tweeting out, and I, I'm pretty sure a bunch of people will be tweeting out results that are on stream. And of course, you can look on Smash GG. Mm -hmm. um, and there will be a bunch of recording setups. I'm not sure how they're organized, but we will have a lot of action recorded for you guys, even if it's not on stream. All right, so keep an eye out after the tournament. Uh, keep an eye on the Facebook page for people posting playlists and everything of uh, teams and the other off-stream singles matches. Yes. And then we're going to go into, you know, I wrote the brackets on a dingy piece of paper. Um, we're not quite esports, but let's talk about the big five that are here and their sure. path to start them. Okay. Um, so we're going to assume that they're going to try to make it as far as possible in winner's bracket because there is no way that we can project what's going to happen in losers. Yeah, no. Um, so our modest path, um, if we're really going to highlight you know, what they're going to need to do to get into the top eight. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at it, and it's actually not too bad, but, you know, there's potential for upsets um, riddled throughout their bracket. So Armada okay. has to play Ginger and an really ESAM to get out of his round two pool. Now, Ginger is a player I don't think a lot of people know. He is from I think Michigan. they should know. Well, he's beaten Drug Fox twice now. Yeah. So that might be why you pe people know him, but I think on the whole... He's beaten him twice. Twice. Two times. Where? Big House and... A random Michigan local. Random where, Michigan local. Where uh, Drug Fox came in. I believe he went Falco, and he lost to Ginger, and he lost to Prince Abu. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Drug Fox. Poor but, uh, Drug Fox. Poor Drug Fox. Okay, so he's got Ginger, and then Esam, more known for his Smash 4 play, uh, but a very strong melee player, uh, plays Samus and Fox. Yes. And then he will qualify for top 64 bracket in the round of 32, mm -hmm. and winners, he will be playing Cactar. Okay. And then he will play the winner of SUJ or Fiction in the round of 16. Mm -hmm. And then in the winner's quarters, you know, there could be some variation. Okay. Um, the, you know, the favorite is Plup in this situation. Mm -hmm. But Ice and Javi are also in that quartile. Yeah. And so although I believe that Plup is the favorite of the three, I would not be surprised if Ice on a good day, who has a lot of experience against Sheik, or Javi could also step in. So the concern I have about Javi is that I don't think we've seen him have a – performance uh, to match his Apex 2012 performance since then. Yeah. Uh, at any national that he's been to, uh, I feel that Javi sort of underwhelms a little bit uh, from what is expected of him. So uh, my take is that it's going to be plopperized. I don't think okay. Javi's going to be anywhere close to Amada. Well, I mean, uh, the thing about Javi is that um, similar to the Europeans, you know, coming for the first time to America, mm -hmm. um, once they encounter a matchup, 
that they're not really familiar with. Right, it's different. Um, it becomes really difficult, and we really saw that with Duck versus Javi. Um, yeah. I felt so. I mean, like Javi did really well against Armada in winners and in loss. He beat Kirby. Duck. He beat Kirby Kaze. Okay. You know, at Big House, that's a good win. He beat yeah. Shroomed, I believe, at Evo. So mm -hmm. you know, his Sheik matchup's not that bad. Although he did lose to Drug Fox at Tipped Off Eleven. Yeah. Um, there is a potential there. Um, that. Javi could take matches off of Plub Sheik and force him onto the Samus. Right, especially given his history against Sheik players. But if he pulls out the Samus, then I think that's going to gonna be sad, yeah. sad times for, for Javi. But Javi now picked up a pocket Sheik. Did he? Yeah. Interesting. And he it wonder, came out against ESAM at tipped off 11. I wonder how he plays that character. Like, I know when he's playing on his controller, he has a very unique way of holding it. Yeah. And, you know, he, he obviously used the joystick the same way as everybody else, but... Uh, minus Plup, who does it like that or something. But he actually uses it like a a, uh, a fight stick, right? Yeah. Where he, you know, utilizes all the his his three fingers to press the buttons on the right. controller, which is very different from. So, the are you telling players. me that Sheik actually requires like tech skill? No. That she actually I don't requires, think she requires practice to use. No. Is that what you're telling I us? I think anybody can use Sheik. I mean, <laughs> I don't practice tech skill. Uh huh. Oh wait, I shouldn't have said that out loud. You guys should practice tech skill. It's your hero. Yes. Um, if you want to get good. But I wouldn't be worried about Javi's chic tech skill. Mm -hmm. I think he's fine. Yeah. He plays Fox, which requires three times more button. And he puts. plays against um, what's the chic from from Aza. Mexico? Aza, yeah. yeah. So he, it's not like he's he doesn't have a training partner in that character. And, ooh, crowd wants good. Anyway. Damn. Um, and so that's Armada's bracket. Yep. You know, I would say like you know he's had a commanding you know advantage over Plup um, mm -hmm. from the sets we've seen you know in Europe. And from friendlies I've seen at Summit, it seems pretty one-sided. Okay. Um, so I'm reasonably confident that Armada will make it into top eight. Yeah. He's only dropped 13 games all of 2015 to non-Big wow. Six members. Wow. Hasn't dropped a set to a non-Big Six guy since AMSA at pound four. And that wasn't in 2015. That was in he 2009. Dropped, he drops. 2009? Um, I think so. 2009 or 2010. I so, when so four. what you're telling Pound me here, four, 2010. What you're telling me here, Mr. Tafelkins, is that in five years Armada has not dropped a set to somebody who's well, not. Well, I mean, the there are line. asterisks. You know, oh, okay. he lost to Triphasia oh, yeah, using secondaries. Yeah, he lost, he lost to C Rabbit. C -Rabbit. Mm -hmm. He lost to Joe Replicate uh -huh. at the Foundry. But do we really count the Foundry? Okay. If we, if we count the Foundry, SFAT would have like a 70 to like yeah. two record. Foundry on doesn't Shroom. count. Foundry doesn't we don't count. count the Foundry. Okay. Foundry doesn't count. Like. Have you seen Troon versus Esfat at the Foundry? It's really no. bad. <laughs> it's I like not. absolutely I, well, terrible. Well, I mean, isn't isn't the Foundry a uh, you know tend to? It's in a bar, so it's, yeah. it's more geared towards the socializing part than the, I want to win the tournament part. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, um, I think Plup could take one game. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going three one. And there's a point like that. Top sixty four, all of it is going to be best of five. Yes, that um, is great. It's a, that's a new thing in the community. I, I like that we've started to implement that at the biggest events. And even if you thought best of three was hard enough to win against a big five member, mm -hmm. imagine trying to win three games now with no bands. And they also get their best counter pick on you. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck beating Armada on Dreamland. Or Muti King on FD yeah. if you're not a big six player. If you beat him once there, if you beat any of them on their counter pick, they're back. Yeah. So it's almost like you have to go 3 1 against them to win. Mm -hmm. um, and then Muti King's route, arguably the toughest out of the, you know, out of the big Ooh. six that are here. Um, and originally, one of those players was in Mango's bracket, but because Lefty didn't make it, there was a little bit of yeah, bump up. Yeah. And so I'm sorry, Muti King, that you are the. What's the opposite benefactor? You are the, I'll know. call you the benefactor. The unlucky duck. The unlucky duck. <laughs> so Muti King, you know, in his round two pool, will mm -hmm. have y Yakal from... Yakal. Y or Yakal V. Brit um, y British Columbia. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Fox Falco player. Yep. Uh, very strong. He's been playing uh, for a long time. <clears throat> um, made some strides, you know, at Big House 3, I believe. Had some wins, but hasn't mm -hmm. really showed up nationally for a while. Right, so that should be that should be a quick 2-0. Quick and then and the Ralph in Squid, um, mm -hmm. the winner of that. Um, Squid most likely because he's very strong in the Falco Ditto. Yep. So um, that will be a very, very fun match, by the way. Uh, if you guys are looking for a good Falco Ditto to watch at this tournament, Ralph and Squid is definitely going to be a good one. Um, Squid is a very consistent Falco on the SoCal PR. Yeah. Um, Ralph is a Falco on the NorCal PR. Is he on the PR? Yes, he okay. is. Very and, strong. Uh, they're both also from the strongest teams in California with uh, Ralph coming from UC Berkeley and Squid coming from mm. University of California, Irvine. Yeah. So that'll be a very good match for um, And Falco is, you know, Squid's matchup. Um, he's won sets off of West Bowls, and this isn't sandbagging West Bowls. This was genuine mm -hmm. 
Was wins. that a, a SSS? There, there's been a couple at okay. SSS and Mams. Mm -hmm. So, um, but Muti King, you know, eats you know spaces for breakfast. So right, that so should as be good a clear as those route. guys are. Yeah. Um, but then this is where it gets interesting because yeah. Muti King will play wobbles in top thirty, and that's something that top thirty two, right? Or um, winner's side of winner's round of thirty two is what okay. I'll say. So, so Muti King versus wobbles. That's really something that I don't think anybody can quite predict. You know, where wobbles is. Sort of, sort of, not quite retired. He's kind of back into it now. But um, his only recent performance that we have that is what you would say like a on par performance was it um, Forte Forte two three three where he beat S Fat and West Balls. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, close best of five sets. Mm -hmm. um, you yeah, know, West Balls reset the bracket in that one. Throughout, throughout. The year, though, you know, despite the fact that I was disappointed in his Evo performance because I drafted him. What did he get? In the, he got in the hundreds, right? He got 129th. I think he lost to Tricolman. Yeah. Um, he was really confident in his Mario. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> stick to the ICs, Wobbles. Stick to the ICs. But he's sponsored now. Yep. Um, and Wobbles has taken sets. Low Tier City 3. Mm -hmm. Muti King brought the onslaught of characters. Peach yeah. didn't work. He tried Marth. He tried Fox. Um, and... Maybe some Sheik in there, too. There, there was a Sheik in there. I remember um, he did some, like, you know, left platform ridiculousness on his Sheik. And so, Wobbles, you know, has taken some sets. Muti King did get some revenge wins at smaller locals following that yep. low-tier city event. But it's scary. Um, I imagine since top 64, or um, that portion of the bracket, um, will happen tomorrow, and his first two matches are relatively easy. He's mm -hmm. going to be playing and finding Ice Climbers the whole day. Yeah. Until... So that's the Muti King thing. If that's he has to play a unique character the next day, he will find the best main, for mm -hmm. that pl best player that plays that character and practice against him for eight hours. Yes. Yeah, he'll just say, I, I, I need to practice. Come here. I need to practice. I, yeah. I don't care what you're doing. I need to practice. Yeah. And of course, you know, if you are the main, you may want to backstab your... Because, you know, the all the character just mains... do really bad things the whole time. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, of course. Uh, I would never do that. Um, the character mains, you know, like the Sheik mains, we all talk. Yeah. We all want to support each other. Mm -hmm. um, Samus mains, you know, even though there's that rivalry, they all want to support each other. Mm -hmm. um, Jigglypuffs are a little different. I think it's Hungrybox versus everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fox mains, like Silent Wolves, s Fat, Cobalt, they all collaborate. Yep. And so it becomes a question of, do I get really good practice against multiple characters against Muti King, yep. or do I backstab my co-main? Or, like, the player that plays. Right. I mean, well, uh, somebody's going to play him. It doesn't matter. Yeah. At that point. Somebody's going to play So that'll yeah. be a really interesting set to see what happens between Mewtwo King and Wobbles. Um, you know, Wobbles is one of my favorites. I think he's a fan favorite, especially yeah. after his Evo tear. Uh, so that'll be really interesting. I'm pulling for Wobbles. Nothing yeah. against Mewtwo King, but I'm pulling for Wobbles I for think this tournament will make or break those players. Really? And I why, do you, why do you think so? I'll elaborate. I think okay. game one. To, to, will make or break those players mm -hmm. because game one will give so much momentum. If Muti King loses game one, yeah, and so, and he gets wobbled three times, I can see him going on tilt. Oh, absolutely. And then losing, and then for like forfeiting or doing something in losers to get mm -hmm. I don't know like thirty third. Okay. Um, I can foresee that happening, or I can see Muti King going well. This is a confidence boost. It's like yes, I got through my inner demon of wobbles who has, you know, taken a lot of sets, mm. and he rides that momentum okay. all the way to top eight. So let's say Mewtwo King gets the confidence boost. Next up, he has S-Fat or Cobalt, both uh, most likely to play Fox. Uh, Cobalt does have a, a very proficient Marth as well. So it'll be one of those two in the in the following match. And, you know, this is interesting because Cobalt has taken sets off of Mewtwo King. Has he? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, was it at HCC? I don't know. I believe HCC. Where did, who did Mewtwo King lose to? I think it was HCC Throwdown. Okay. Um, and then <coughs> SFET has gone really close. Mm -hmm. Lots of game fives. You know, choked this FD game on game five where he had a full stock lead and then lost to Muti King. Yeah, and, I mean, that can happen. I mean, especially when you're playing a matchup like Marth Fox where, you know, one grab can just lead to ruin. And so the thing about SFET, though, is that he's had these massive leads on Hungrybox, on Muti King, yeah. on Peepee, in has, tournament. He has not been able to just, like, just clutch it out and, and yeah. finish it out. And maybe, just maybe, that the four days of hyperbolic time training against Armada will yeah. push him over that limit. Yeah, it's been him, Pew Pew you, and Armada uh, streaming from one of their houses. Yeah. And so maybe this is the tournament where SFAT breaks out. Um, I would really great. love to see love that to happen. See I know SFAT's been putting in a lot of work. He streams his practice very frequently. Um, he plays very deliberately, which is... Um, Something we're seeing a lot more of, but he, you know, the way that he he has the control over his character allows him 
a lot of things that he can actually yeah. pull off, which is which is a lot of fun to watch. And I think for him, you know, just as Hungrybox has Captain Crunch, mm -hmm. SFAT has a NorCal um, homie by the name of Bobby Siege, who gives him yep. a lot of moral and moral support okay. and comfort. And he is, you know, in the venue, he's also, this is a NorCal tournament, so mm -hmm. I think that will be a boost for him. Because okay. when he goes out alone, um, we saw that in the Les Leffen versus SFAT match, like, mm -hmm. He starts to lose confidence, and he needs that person to give him the voice of reason, saying like, "You got this." Gotcha. Or like, even if Bobby Siege is not allowed to coach, just his mere presence will remind him, like, "Hey, yeah. like, it's like I have, I have my guy right here. Yeah. You know, I don't want to unravel in front of him. You know, and, and so that does. You're right. It will remind him to keep on point." Um, so if Uteking manages that, then yeah. he plays the winner of PP and Lucky. Ooh. And although initially people are saying like, "Why, why am I even putting a slash there over PP and Lucky?" Um, I think it's valid. I think it's valid. Um, PP at his peak, you know, arguably, you know, the best player in the world playing at his best. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't really seen that for almost a year. Um, the right. last time we have seen, uh, like, a spectacular performance, in my opinion, although he got third at EVO, mm -hmm. um, was at Apex. And that was yeah. almost, that was almost exactly year ago. a year ago. Full year ago. And uh, the thing with PP in the last year, and I'm sure anybody who, who's been on his Twitter has seen these things, is that he, he has some some problems going on with actually uh, having a, a, a good amount of mental energy to play his matches. Yeah. And so that could be something that against Lucky, a very proficient, very consistent, uh, a highly technical player who has, you know, some of the best practice in the world for as many years as he's been playing, especially against Mango and other SoCal players, uh, it, it could serve to be a bit overwhelming for PP to deal with. And so I, I definitely agree with that slash there where it could be either one of those players in Mewtwo King's path. Yeah. Um, however, I don't think... Um, I think PP is the only player between Lucky and PP to have a, a real chance about beating Mewtwo yeah. King. Um, so um, Lucky might just overrun him, um, but we're hoping that PPMD you know brings his best stuff. It's yeah. kind of I don't even think Lucky would feel good if PP was playing you know off. I don't think he would, but as long as as long as somebody is playing really well, I think that'll that'll be pay off enough. Yeah. All right, we'll move forward since yeah. we want to get some time for the melee games. The hungry box, hungry box bracket, yeah. SK92 or Allen. And then myself or Azusa, most likely Azusa. So who, who's Azusa? Azusa is a hidden peach main from NorCal who's mm -hmm. actually really solid. Okay. <coughs> and then if HBox beats, you know, them, it should be Gimme's. Um, he actually has a really weird bracket Eddie in terms of characters. Eddie Mexico and Bladewise? He has Eddie Mexico and Bladewise, mm -hmm. um, a Luigi or a Peach, um, yeah. both that he's incredibly strong against. And he can deal with the floaty versus floaty matchup very well. I mean, yeah. He can outspace the... He, he makes, like, those matchups look them. miserable. Yeah. Like, I would not want to play Peach, right. and I would not want to play Luigi against yeah. Hungry so Box. Going and forward yeah. from there, he's got Macti and Drug Fox. That'll be interesting, Drug Fox switching to Falco. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if this was a Sheik thing, <coughs> I still wouldn't really be confident in Drug Fox. MACD right. has taken two sets off of Drug Fox in the past year. Okay. Uh, once at Paragon and once, I believe, at I'm Not Yelling. Peach versus Sheik? Yes. Um, Drug Fox has made a lot of claims to me saying that he worked on that matchup, he is better, and he will win against MACD if they ever play again. Okay. But then now he switched to Falco, so now it's just like, okay, um, yeah. I, I don't know where you stand. Yeah. But maybe because it's a floaty and not a spacey, he will go Sheik. Um, well, we'll his main issue was that he can tech chase with uh, Sheik on spaces consistently enough. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting to see the turnout of those, but I think Hoagie Box will... Basically, he, he seems like he's going to have a, a kind of a kind of a cakewalk up into the final match yeah. here. And then his last match is really interesting. I believe that four candidates fit this box. Four candidates. Westfall, Shroomed, Nintendude, and the Moon. <coughs> I don't know. Um, I think uh, H Hungry Box is you know strong against all of them. So is it is it Westfalls versus Shroomed and uh, I Moon don't versus quite know. Okay. It's it Westfalls versus the Moon and Hung and Shroom versus Nintendude. Oh, believe. okay, okay. Um, but I think any combination. Of those could happen. Yeah, I think it's just a just a matter of who's playing better that day. Um, but I think HBox, I have like a ninety percent confidence in him getting to top eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, based off of those players, I agree. And then Mango um, has Rula. Yeah, Falco from Florida. Uh, Sung um, Falco from plays every Sheik? plays everything. Uh, hope I don't. I hope he doesn't go Samus or something garbage. Um, and then he has a bait or my case. Um, my case has been a bait the last time they played in SoCal. Okay. Um, but a bait, you know. Yeah, it's, it's still Luigi. He's still got his, his cap. So I, yeah. I think against Mango, that's not going to really be too yeah. much. Yeah, I'm hoping that Mike Hayes doesn't hit his ceiling there mm -hmm. um, because I really have been, you know, working with Mike Hayes on a lot of his stuff. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see Mike do that. And then PPU or out. Hugs, and then Axe or Silent Wolf. Okay. So all these matchups are very doable for Mango. Yeah. And I think this will be a Falco day for him. 
Yep. Um, he's I mean, stronger it, as Falco against um, all these players, or at least decent enough that he could win with Falco. Yeah, and I mean against PPU or Hugs, that's I think between that and then Axe and Shroomed. Um, Axe and Silent Wolf. Silent Wolf, thank you. Uh, I think Axe has the potential with Pikachu to at least give him a very close set. Yes. Yeah. But I don't know about taking it. Although off. the Falco, um, I've looked at the match splits between uh, Mango's Fox versus Pikachu and Mango's Falco, and Mango's Falco actually destroys Axe. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's why I've so been kind of pushing. He's better against uh, the Fox. Like uh, Axe is better against Mango's Fox. Yes, okay. significantly. Okay. Um, and then PPMD has YCC6 or Reno, and then YCC6 first, and then Reno or your boy Mafia. Ooh, let's go Mafia! <laughs> so oh, that it's be over. PP's done. He's gonna be in losers real quick. Real quick, Mafia is the best Peach. L the last dope Peach main. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. And so, so good. we're going to assume PP's going to win. Sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll and then PP gets into top 64, yeah. winner's side. Mm -hmm. He will play Swedish Delight or Santi. Santi, okay, from SoCal, uh, formerly known as Lil Fumi. Yes. Okay. That um, Swedish versus Santi, I hope that gets streamed. I think that's yeah. one of the best matches in round two pools. And that'll be what a Sheik did, all right? Um, Santi might go Fox. Okay. Um, and then Luckier Duck. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Luckier Duck. Uh, that'll be interesting to see what comes out of that. But I think Lucky's got this. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Well, with Luck, with uh, Duck's performance against um, Leffen in the past, I don't know, man. Against Fox. Does Leffen have a Samus main in this region? I don't know anything about Sweden. Probably not. The fact that you can't list one. Okay. It's okay. There telling. you go. Point. Okay. All right. You're right. Uh. Yeah. All right. Well, in that case, you know, it could be. I could go could either way. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Duck won. Yeah. But I'm rooting for my boy Lucky. Okay. And then we have Muti King. Yep. Yeah, we we talked about that earlier. Um, between the two players, uh, Muti King and PP. Um. I don't know. I, I I just really hope that PP has it, and I hope PP has a good weekend. That's yeah. that's really what I'm I'm hoping for. I love when PP plays well. Um, everybody loves when PP plays well, you know. And I really hope that's what we see. I, I hope we everybody uh, that we've talked about. I hope everybody here has been preparing their fullest and is here to just play really good melee. Yeah, and, and I that's think that's what we're rooting for, right? Good melee. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what gets us all excited. So we're hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. Um. I know we ran a little bit. We have 10 minutes to talk about the Melee games. Um, okay. How many teams were there this year? 179. Uh, and if you were to give me like a two-tweet length of what the Melee games is, uh, what what is it? What is it for the audience? The Melee games is a national collegiate Melee league that takes five players or more per school to participate in crew battles against each other to determine the best player in the nation. You don't sound very excited nation. about it. You want me to be excited? Yeah. The Melee Games is one of the best things that Melee has had in the last two years. We started uh, in spring of 2014 with 10 schools, 137 players. And here we are, four seasons into it, where we've done it spring, fall, spring, fall, with 179 schools, six schools that we flew out. We flew out 30 players to Genesis 3 to compete. Looks like UCI uh, beat University of Washington and University of Arizona is playing them now. Um, and... Then we got Sony Burke and Georgia Tech uh, and York. So very exciting. Melee Games is, is one of my favorite things. It's a passion project of mine. Um, and I, I really look forward to seeing the things we're going to do. I, I believe we can take over the world with the Melee Games. Yes. I do. Um, give us a couple of years. We'll get so, there. So, you know, if there's like a prospective college student that's watching this stream and they're like, oh, the Melee Games, you know, it's colleges playing against each other. How do they hear more about this? Um, so the the two easiest ways would be either through twitter.com slash the Melee Games or facebook.com slash the Melee Games. Um, we have a smash.gg slash TMG site, but that's primarily just for registration right now. There's been a lot of things in the back end that haven't been taken care of due to uh, massive events taking priority. So how does the school sign up for the next season? You can sign up for the next season on smash.gg slash TMG. We're going to be opening up that sign up uh, after this tournament. So it's, it's not available yet. You go to the site, you're not going to really get anything. But uh, it will be opened up after this tournament. The thing with next season, however, uh, is uh, this spring, this coming season, uh, we're going to be toning it back a little bit. So we're going to keep the same areas that we're in. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we're in we're in 25 or 26 states right now, um, and we're gonna we're gonna keep it to those same areas. Uh, but we're not going to be going at it with the goal of having a full national league to 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 bring people out to a single tournament. Um, 
if we were, it would probably be pound, but we're not. Okay. Um, the reason being is that uh, a league such as this, uh, you know, we're obviously kind of making it up as we go. We don't really have a, a framework in the Smash community for something like this. It's not some, we're, we're building it as we're doing it. Yeah. And um, so one of the big, big things that we learned this season is that it requires a lot more extensive planning and a lot more time because there was a lot of pressure this season. Um, so we're going to do this coming season. We're going to tone it back a little bit. It's going to be free. Um, this season we charge fifty dollars, um, and you know we use that money to fly out the players. Yeah. No, went nobody's pockets. Um, so, but this coming season it's going to be free. It's going to be kept to sort of like a state by state level. Yeah. You know we're going to do a New England division. We'll do a Mid Atlantic division. We'll do NorCal versus SoCal. But it's not really going to go beyond that point. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more, more relaxed. And then this coming fall uh, in two thousand sixteen, we're actually going to be doing a full season of fall to through spring okay um through spring 2017 so it'll give us a lot more time to work with a lot more time to plan uh it'll be a lot easier for the schools than having them have to play you know maybe maybe two to three crew battles a month yeah um and you know we'll obviously be charging for for that again because we'll be going back to doing it as a national do they get a cool trophy or anything? yes um well it's not, it's not necessarily it's a trophy it's it's a trophy of sorts it's a it's a uh, we got five of them uh, for the the five players that win the win the melee games here during the salty suite tomorrow night, um, and it's it's a um, it's like a little glass like maybe plexiglass I don't know what the yeah. material is but uh, where we got it uh, etched with the Smash logo um, and uh, you know TMG Fall 2015 champions. So so, Ir so Irvine will have a nice trophy in their deck, is what you're telling me. No. I very well could see Stony Brook or Georgia Tech taking out Irvine. I could see it. You sound like a LOL esports writer right now. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> we, when, you, when you look at the, the, the team's information, uh, Georgia Tech is the only team that all of their players have a positive kill-death ratio. All of them. Uh, what do you mean by kill-death ratio? Kill, so kill-death ratio is uh, the number of stocks that somebody has taken in crew battles lifetime in the melee games yeah. and the number of stocks that they have lost in crew battles lifetime in the okay. melee games. Uh, and then you, div you divide uh, the number that they've taken by the number that they've lost. And that so they have the a better than one ratio. That's all right. Okay. All of the players from Georgia Tech do. Uh, Stony Brook University, not very well-known players. Uh, not going to lie. Minty equals Soul, Venti, Vortex. Who are oh, those people? Oh, I don't Minty even know. Minty beat Duck. I don't even know who those people are. Minty beat Mi Duck. Oh, Minty did beat Duck. At uh, Super Smash Con this Right, year. but he, they haven't really broken out to the national level to the point that people really know who they are. Um, I however, do. Well, of course you know. <laughs> but, uh, however... Um, all of those players have uh, very high average stocks taken per crew battle. Yeah. Um, upwards of six for Minty, Soul, equal. Uh, Vortex is a little bit lower, but he's very solid. Um, so it, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, you know, both Georgia Tech and, and SBU, I think, could rival UCI for shorten. Um, you know, we saw UW lose to UCI. I haven't seen the match, but uh, my assumption is that Otto, uh, Silent Wolf, uh, probably pulled his weight. <laughs> and that was it. Um, so you can't really rely on having a team with one good player. It might bring you to nationals. Can, I just, there, the, can I just say what the Irvine lineup is? Yeah, go I, ahead. I think it's so broken. It's stacked. No, no, Irvine is stacked. Okay, they have Santi, who's to a top 50 player. Mm -hmm. They have Matt, who's also on SSBM rank. Mm -hmm. They have Connor, who's also on SSBM rank. Mm -hmm. They have Captain Face Roll, who almost made it this year. Yep, he's and they have SoCal. And they have Squid. Yep. All these people are are PR'd in SoCal. Yeah. They have taken several sets off of top players. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's no hole in that team. Like No, there's really not. Like You can't hide a weaker player against that team because they will cleanly two to three stock a weak player. Right, and, and that's the thing about these crew battles is you see a team where it's like, oh, okay, well, maybe you have one really high-level player like... Um, Silent Wolf or PPU Hungrybox. Hungry Box. Uh, yeah, Hungrybox was on... Um, it, this is a really good example. Hungrybox was on the... University um, of Florida. Yeah, University of Florida, and they played against the University of Central Florida, uh, which had Gatsu and a majority of the Central Florida PR on it. Yeah. And uh, they lost. Well, like, you know, would you so have ever seen Gatsu going stock for stock? Okay, honestly, I would not have thought Gatsu <laughs> was going to make a three-stock comeback against Hungrybox. I didn't think that was going to happen. It happens. Uh, he got, like, a down throw, down air at 40%, and Hungrybox just didn't, didn't get the easiest meteor cancel in the game. Um, but nonetheless, you, the thing is where you, you might have a high skill ceiling for your team 
Um, but if the rest of your players, you know, if you have one person who's way up here and the rest of the guys are like kind of hovering around this yeah. area, versus a team where everybody's more like in this section, uh, you're gonna lose. Well, like let's put it this way: if Hungry Box like took seven stocks, which is a pretty good performance, mm -hmm. you have another player on your team that takes one stock. Right. You're you're back to square one. Yeah, that doesn't earn you anything. So it, you want all your players to ideally uh, be taking at, at at least going at least zero, right? Where they take four socks and lose four socks. Yeah. At the least, you know. Um, and if if not, then obviously your team is now losing slightly. Yeah. So uh, it, it's one of the very interesting things about crew battles that uh, I don't think has really been explored too much uh, in the community since uh, the, the time before the melee games had begun. You know, I think if um, as we have more crew battles, I think there could be a lot written. <coughs> and I think I see like There's a lot of information you can take from crew battles. We've, we've Very seen interesting we've stuff. seen crew battles at the national scale get ruined by poor coaching and decision making. Yep. Um, there are players, for example, that you never want to anchor a crew. Yeah. Um, definitely, there's players and uh, and characters uh, that you typically don't want to have as anchor, and and like it, a bad anchor will will break it all for you. Yeah. You know? Um, Ralph being like one of the best anchors of all time, in yeah. my opinion. Mango is a phenomenal anchor. Armada is. Kage is. Mm -hmm. Um, you want you want somebody who can who can play confident, play confidently, play safely, uh, and and really make sure that they're they're dishing out the damage and taking stocks while keeping the damage to themselves yeah. at a minimal. So that's why a character that's why players like Kage with his Ganon, or or Mango with well anybody really yeah. uh, can can hold it back and and really confidently say like all right just put me in last uh, I'll take care of it yeah you know uh, and and on a lower uh, lower skill level you know that. It's not as quite as relevant, uh, and I think it comes down more to character um, when you're looking at a lower, uh, a lower gap, a lower skill range. Right. And so, there. I think um, overall we're wrapping up. I'm gonna blast you with some questions. Who do you think is okay. gonna win the melee games? Who do I think is gonna win the melee games? Uh, UCI. Who do you think? Despite what win? I was saying earlier. Who's gonna win doubles? I don't know anything about the doubles teams actually. Probably, probably. Uh, do we have Armada Hungrybox? Armada, it's Armada Muti King. Um, who's the second seed? Well, there's Pew Fat. MACD Leffen's not a thing. I feel so bad for MACD. Um, you know what? I'm going to say Pew Fat. Hungry Box I love CLG Pew Fat. And then Hungry Box Axe. CLG Pew Fat. I'm going to go with Hungry Box Axe for this okay. one. Um, it's just a bizarre team to deal with, and they can't exploit. Because a lot of teams, you know, exploit the spacey. They combo in really fast. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really see that with Hungry Box Axe. Uh, they can do Grab Rest, they can do Gimps. Um, they have a lot of bag of tricks that I think a lot of teams will have to figure out how to play against. Mm -hmm. And so I think for the novelty factor and how nobody really figured it out at DreamHack, I think that they are the team to beat at this okay. tournament. Um, singles, grand finals. Grand finals. Uh, I want Mango Armada. I want Mango Armada, and I want Mango to take it. Okay. That's what I want from grand finals at Genesis 3. Breakout performance. Breakout performance. Mafia, I want my boy to go far. I want my boy to go for. He's so good. He's been putting in so much work. He's been dominating New England. Uh, he has like a 30-13 record against me. Kicks my butt all the time. Kicks everybody else's butt in New England except for like slots. But you're one and zero against Leffen. You always. Yeah, I mean, like I am admittedly a top five player in the world, but uh, I definitely want Mafia to go really far. Okay. Um, what's he got? I think we're good. Okay, let me throw something at you. What's your favorite thing about Genesis Three so far? Uh, it doesn't smell. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> best food in the area. Um, oh gosh, there's like novelty places like Levix mm -hmm. um, that like I have to get with the orange sauce because it's it's San Jose. Okay. Um, there's a place in Japantown that you could uh, you know take a quick Uber called Gombe, mm -hmm. and they have like homemade style um, Japanese food that I really love. Okay. Why is East Coast better than West Coast? Um, I would like to say the the miserable weather, the 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 darkness and the gloominess of people and the mm -hmm. snarkiness. They're probably the the best things about why the east. I agree. Um, the depressing twenty degree weather we've had in Boston recently. Uh, you know, having to bundle up every single day and and hoping that you have everything you need when you leave the house is really something that has a, it's a big advantage to being able to walk outside, uh, such as we have been this weekend in, in just a sweatshirt yeah. or just a t shirt. And I just I, I really hate what's going on out and here. And I really like that I can um, exercise. The East Coast would make me exercise because I would have to shovel my car every day. Yeah, yeah, um, you get some that, back strength. Yeah, yeah. And so I would really. That's why the East Coast is better than the West. Coast. Right, we have seasons. Yeah, you know, we've actually seen snow before. 
Uh, so, you know, I, I appreciate you admitting all those reasons uh, that West Coast is bad. Yes. So thank you very much, Mr. Tafelkins, for, for yeah. that. And uh, are we are we good to go? I think we we're good. Um, all right. So thanks for tuning in. Um, we will have, uh, I believe, melee um, singles here. We have the crew battles. Oh, cool. I okay. don't know if you guys could hear him, but we. <laughs> okay, we, we we have we have a we have a god in our headsets, and uh, so Wii U pre-show is at noon, and the Wii U crew battles. What is it? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Uh, and that's is that also a draft cruise? Um, it's region cruise. Regional cruise. Okay, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Smash Smash Four still new, so okay. Yep. Okay, so. Showdown Smash 2 is doing melee singles. Showdown GG is doing the melee games. Mm -hmm. And Showdown GG 2 is doing the Wii um, singles, Wii U singles. So a lot of streams, um, depending on what your flavor is, um, go ahead and tune in. And use the hashtag G3 if you find something cool or something amazing. Mm -hmm. Comment on it. Spread the word. We are on ESPN now. And That's hopefully... Amazing. We continue to grow, and thanks for uh, tuning in. All right. Thanks, folks, and uh, I hope you enjoy watching Genesis 3. Yes. Now let's awkwardly stare at the camera. <laughs> <laughs>